The question now is that the amendment be agreed to, and I call the member for Forrest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and um, Mr. Deputy Speaker. It is um, a, a, I'm pleased to rise um, on the Fair Work Amendment, our corrupting benefits bill of 2017. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, it's quite a simple principle. Secret payments are corrosive to institutions that ultimately require public confidence to function effectively. And this bill uh, basically deals with the secret payments made to unions and to union officials. The corrosive influence of these payments has been laid bare time and time again by numerous and current and former union officials. And we've seen evidence before the Hayden Royal Commission uncovering a raft of payments between unions and employers that were designed, specifically designed, to ensure companies received favourable treatment from the unions. And our government is committed to restoring, to restoring integrity, fairness and transparency into the workplace in relation to these deals. And it starts with requiring employers and union officials and unions to act with integrity, with fairness and with transparency in their dealings especially for the workers to know exactly what those deals are. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, we learnt from the Hayden Royal Commission a great deal about the secret side of these union deals. For example, the AWU received half a million dollars from the glass manufacturer ACI, which was laying off workers at its factory in Western Melbourne. The employer undertook these redundancies without any response at all from the union. Another example uh, revealed by the Royal Commission is the 300,000 that Thies John Holland uh, paid in relation to the East Link Freeway in Melbourne. Now, this was an agreement between the AWU and Thies John Holland, and it did, uh, according to the Royal Commission, involve false invoices. A common thread throughout these deals, Mr Deputy Speaker, is the union involved was the Australian Workers' Union, and its leader at the time that these deals were done was, of course, none other than the leader of the opposition. Well, why was the AWU negotiation for workers building a freeway? You would think the CFMEU would be working in the interests of, work, of those workers. However, we do know that the AWU basically muscled into the CFMEU's turf to build up its membership in order to bolster the influence of the member for Maribyrnong. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, that wasn't the last deal we heard about during the Trade Union Royal Commission. There's a wealth of information and, and documentation as part of that Royal Commission. As the Prime Minister referred to in his second reading speech, ACI operations paid the AWU in Victoria around $500,000 while they laid off workers at their Spotswood glass manufacturing factory. And what was that payment for? Well, the Royal Commission discovered that the invoice issued by the AWU was for paid education leave, but actually predominantly was used to offset a loan to renovate the union's Victorian office and other general union costs. Not quite the paid education leave. And of course, what we do see here is a pattern of behaviour, which is why this legislation is so important. What we did see was yet another example of the AWU making shady deals, um, and another important one was the one they made with Clean Event. Now, this was a deal where Clean Event paid the AWU $75,000 to maintain an enterprise agreement that paid their cleaning workers well below award wages and actually stripped them of their penalty rates. Now, penalty rates is something we've heard a lot about, including from the previous speaker. And of course, these are low pay workers initially, and yet their penalty rates were traded away without their knowledge. The Hayden Royal Commission basically said um, there were savings to clean event. And of course, it wasn't just the AWU's $25,000 uh, per annum payment that they received, probably what they wanted most was what they got. In exchange, Clean Event provided lists of 100 purported members. And we've heard 
so much from the Leader of the Opposition about penalty rates in the past. It's extremely ironic, this particular case. The payments were detailed in a, a secret letter. A secret letter, not one shared with the workers uh, or the cleaners. A secret letter between the AWU and Clean Event. And these, this letter were, was never ever disclosed to the cleaning workers. And that is a prime example of a secret payment. Mr Deputy Speaker, this pattern, and it's clearly a pattern, that's what the Hayden Royal Commission found, it was a pattern of behaviour. That's why the legislation before the House is so important for those workers um, and for the issues around transparency and fairness. Mr Deputy Speaker, this pattern of behaviour has very serious implications for unions and their members' confidence in their leadership. How could those clean event workers trust their union leaders when this is the deal they did without their knowledge, without transparency? Just one in nine employees in the private sector are union members, that figures show. So I'm, how can anyone in this House be surprised when we hear and employees hear about these types of deals? And they would ask, well, why should we join a union when you see what happened to those clean event workers? And they were some of the lowest paid workers in the nation, and they were literally sold out by the union that they were members of and the leader of that union. And the ACTU may wonder why membership is such a low. Well, there's a prime example. Now, the Royal Commission uncovered even more evidence of secret payments. And of course, the AEWU was involved in these again, as I said, a perpetuation of the pattern. Winslow Constructors was caught in the AWU's web of secret payments. In his final report, in a chapter entitled AWU and Winslow Constructors, Justice Hayden sets out in great detail the payments made and what they were for. And this actually was an arrangement that went back to the 1990s, right up into 2000, Mr Deputy Speaker. Justice Hayden set out a, the false invoices stated by the AWU as training, but entered into the AWU's own accounting system as membership income. Evidence given by witnesses from Winslow Constructors indicated that no training was provided during the time in line with the uh, information in the invoices. No training. Now, the former State Secretary of the AWU and the Leader of the Opposition's chosen successor gave evidence that there was no sound basis for concluding that no training was provided and asserted that because the AWU provided training, one would not conclude that it was not provided to Winslow. In other words, because the AWU provided training, it was provided to Winslow as a matter of course. That's a very interesting hypothesis. The Royal Commissioner found, and I quote, these submissions are all unpersuasive. They are at odds with the contemporaneous evidence. Unpersuasive, Mr Deputy Speaker, that is very strong language for a formal, former High Court judge. The Commission found that the Leader of the Opposition's successor was instrumental in creating the false invoices. The evidence was accepted by Justice Hayden that Mr Mellon was involved in the secret payments from Winslow to the AWU. He personally directed the creation of knowingly false invoices and maintaining this practice for the time he was Secretary of the Victorian branch. Now, this legislation will make these types of uh, will make it illegal for these types of deals, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And given the history, it's not before time. It's not before time for the workers at Clean Event. It's not before time for each of the workers in the cases I've mentioned. The Winslow Constructors Payment Incident and others are clearly a pattern of the behaviour. That's why the legislation is so important, to break that pattern and to give the employees and the union members confidence. Now, um, employers participated in these arrangements. And the Commission clearly draws the inference that companies participated for a number of potential reasons. Because they expected to gain more flexible or cheaper employee pay or conditions, to win jobs, or perhaps it was to avoid strikes and other industrial disputes. Now, in the movies, uh, I think this is what's um, termed a shakedown. 
companies pay these secret deals to either get a cheaper workforce or industrial peace. And clearly, in the light of what we saw in the Royal Commission, um, there is an urgent need of reform, which is why this bill is so important. This legislation is a direct outcome of the Royal Commission. In the volume five of the report, chapter four is entitled Corrupting Benefits and sets out what it believes should be reformed to ensure that these practices are eradicated. The Commission said, and I quote, the problems are long-standing. They are inherently intractable. There is every incentive to preserve secrecy. The report summarised the targeted reforms. One, that registered organisations and branches be required to disclose certain payments made to them. Two, a Commonwealth corrupting benefits offence in relation to officers of registered organisations be enacted. Three, employers be prohibited from making any payments to an employee organisation, including certain classes of payment. Mr Deputy Speaker, this is precisely uh, what the legislation we are debating here does, along with the Registered Organisations Act. These laws will equally apply to employers. Whether you're offering or paying a benefit or soliciting or receiving it, all participants will be accountable as they should be. It's about the fairness, it's about the transparency, and the penalties involved in this bill um, are certainly part of um, what we need to achieve. The legislation will help clean up the unfair, the secretive and often corrupt payments we've seen come to light in the Hayden Royal Commission. It will go to restoring integrity and fairness to workplaces. It's going to give some confidence to a whole lot of workers, which is what this should be about and is about. As I said when I started, Mr Deputy Speaker, it's quite a simple principle. Secret payments are corrosive to institutions that ultimately require public confidence to function effectively. And our government, we want to restore that public confidence and these institutions in these institutions and ensure that they are run fairly and in accordance with the rule of law. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Thank the uh, member for Forrest. The